Good. Good morning and welcome to Furloughed with Vegan Pete episode 7. I'm Vegan Pete. I'm Furloughed. And at the moment, that is why we're doing the show named as such. I'm doing good though. I'm always looking for silver linings. And the goal of this show isn't to bitch about being furloughed. It's to get that social interaction that I'm missing from work. And although I may be missing out on that because I'm furloughed, uh, I'm sure there are many of you that are missing out on that social interaction because you are working from home now. So no matter why you are spending a lot of time cooped up at home, I think this show will have something for you. So we've done six episodes so far. We've hit on a big variety of topics. Uh, one big thing we haven't hit on yet is sex. And I feel like I failed you because sex is such a great topic that I failed to talk about. I should have been talking a, a lot more about sex than fucking Tiger King. Even the state of Oregon has put out a PSA infographic about sex during this pandemic. So let me bring that up for you. As I found it quite funny. Hopefully that's big enough for you guys to see. The Oregon Health Authority tweeted out a graphic along with this statement. At a time when Oregonians are spending more time than ever at home, we imagine you may be wondering, is it still safe to have sex? In short, yes. But you can still, you can still have sex, but with precautions. Here are some tips on practicing safe sex during this time. Oakenhop says, hell yeah. Oregon Health Authority printed this bad boy and placed it over the bed. <laughs> Susan Sprinkle, I don't like this. It's like hearing my dad talk about sex. Now I know I remind you of your dad, and I don't know how I feel about it. So let's look at this graphic. Starts out with, you are your safest sex partner. Masturbate. Use toys. Take this time to find out what makes you feel good. The graphic to accompany this part has a large jug of lube, a vibrator, two fingers, a cell phone with a video that's playing. We'll assume it's on Pornhub or something like that. And, of course, a flashlight. Uh, I'm good with most of this. I don't know about the fleshlight. I feel like the fleshlight, I, I've never used one or held one, so I don't know how clean it is. It seems like it'd be very difficult to keep clean, and you might spread the coronavirus that way. So I'm not 100% sure about that fleshlight on there. Gator Pants saying, they're assuming a lot about my personal time routine. Are you saying uh, you do it more than they are suggesting? So this is great advice if you're living alone. You don't want to be going out in a pandemic to get laid. Maybe not so great if you're living with your partner. If you're living with your partner, you need to be like a, a masturbation ninja now that you're constantly stuck in the house all the time. Basically, uh, you have to be able to do it with just your mind or else your partner asks, asks a bunch of questions. What's that noise? Sounded like something rubbing against the sheets. Why did you close the bedroom door after I got up? Jeez, that was like a 45-minute shower. What happened to all my jurgens? See, I mean, there's just too many questions to deal with that. When you have your partner at home, you got to be a stealth wanker. Well, if they suggest it, I have to use all five. Hey, it's the Oregon Health Authority. So if they say it, it must be right. Next, we have get off while maintaining your distance. The phone, sexting, and web chat form platforms can be a way to connect socially and sexually without exchanging fluids. I'm totally for this, and honestly, something that could be taught instead of abstinence only. Then we have the most boring of sections, selective kissing. Kissing can easily transfer COVID-19. Avoid kissing anyone who is not part of your small, small circle of close contacts. They should not have put this third. 
you've already talked about masturbation and sexting. You can't drop in kissing right here. It needs to keep ramping up. They should have led with selective kissing. Also, this is probably something that should be practiced all the time. If you're of age and have been having one night stands, you've probably had sex with more people than you've kissed. Kissing is almost more intimate than having sex. You can wear a condom when you're having sex. But kissing, that's skin on skin. That's intimate. Thanks, Dad. Another, another person saying I'm reminding them of their dad. Right, Caterpant says, yeah, there's no, no one at home. Kind of jerk. Now it's all, what's that crap? Yeah, got to be stealth about it. Speaking of condoms, and next up on this infographic is use condoms. Which really, unless you're in a long-term relationship, you should be using condoms even when there isn't a pandemic. Goes on to read, Condoms and dental dams can reduce contact with saliva and feces, especially during oral or anal sex. And to be honest, if you asked me to describe or draw a dental dam, I would have absolutely no idea where to start. It's something that I've known about since middle school sex class, but I've actually never seen a picture of it. No idea how it works. I'd probably fuck it up and whatever fluids the dam was supposed to block would go rushing in. Kitty Pants says, pro tip, never kiss the prostitute. Good call. Ogenhop says, nothing is hotter than a fucking dental ba- dam. Let me tell you. I don't think, can anyone draw a dental dam? I don't think we could. I think we'd all mess it up if we tried it. Now we have my favorite part, which is called press pause. And it has a picture of a peach with a pause sign. What could this mean? Well, it goes on to read rimming. And in case you don't know what rimming in it has in parenthesis, mouth on anus might spread COVID-19. Virus and feces may enter your mouth. So there's a, there's a lot to unpack, in, unpack, unpack from this section, even though it's small. I like that it says pause and not stop, because pause implies that you're just taking a break and you're going to get back to it pretty soon. Stop is like, stop doing it. Don't go back to it. And it says that it might spread COVID-19. Not that it will, but it might. So it might spread it. So pause for just a second. So when you're about to go all mouth on anus, as they put it, pause. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're going to do. Tasting that chocolate starfish might give you COVID-19. But we're not sure. It just might give it to you. So really, just think about it. Weigh your options. This is a personal choice. No one can tell you what to do in a situation like this. Break out the whiteboard, start a pros and cons list, and whichever one has more points in that column, if it is pro, then you, you go ahead on with that ribbon. You get, you get on that. There's no way you'll be able to monetize this on YouTube. Well, I don't monetize anything on YouTube, so that will never be happening. And I got my first copyright claim when we watched all the PSAs from uh, the, par the parody song. Um, what else do we have on this? Oh, and then they end with, you really should have, uh, and you, they really should have ended on this rimming part. But the last part of this graphic is, wash your hands, and reads, washing up before and after sex is more important than ever. Wash hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And I really feel like they should have put an asterisk on this line as well and said that if you, de if you decided to unpause and go forward with the rimming, you might want to gargle some mouthwash as well. I think so that's just important as washing your hands because if you eat the ass... You don't gargle mouthwash, and then you, you kiss a family member, you're doing the selective kissing, then you just spread the coronavirus, feces the mouth. Oh, it's a, it's a whole mess after that. So thank you to the Oregon Health Authority for making and tweeting this out. I don't know if it will actually help 
stop the spread of COVID-19, but at the very least, it brought me great pleasure and content. So thank you to the Oregon Health Authority for that. Mieko says, indirect rimming, so it's an epidemic. Peter Pan says, I mean, if your sex routine doesn't already require elbow length rubber gloves, are you really having fun? Are you really doing it right? All right, so I, that tickled me. I enjoyed that from the Oregon Health Authority. That was good. Um, how many minutes did I do on that? About 10 minutes on sex. Some of you might be satisfied that with that. 10 minutes worth. 10 minutes worth of sex. Some of you aren't finished. You want me to keep going, don't you? You want some more. I'll give you what you want. Piggybacking on that first point from the Oregon Health Authority on self-care, we'll call it. It seems like there has been a run on sex toys. At least in New Zealand, anyways. 48 hours before New Zealand was set to go on lockdown, the sales of sex toys went up by threefold. The store giving out these stats is called Adult Toy Mega Store. Based in New Zealand, but also serving Australia and Britain, sales from the site doubled when Australia announced bars were ordered to close on March 22nd and when Boris Johnson announced the same on the 21st. They also report that sales tripled on March 11th when the World Health Organization declared coronavirus a pandemic. I have a feeling that the people that are hoarding sex toys are way more fun to hang out with than the people hoarding toilet paper. That's just what I assume. Kater Pan says, 10 minutes? That's 10 times longer than I'm used to. Damn. But I'm bum. Broly says, damn, Kater Pants, you beat me to it. Um, it's not all hoarding, though. Apparently, a lot of people are buying sex toys for the first time. The pandemic is expanding horizons. A spokesperson for the company said, we're selling a lot of beginner toys. All our beginning ranges are very popular. It definitely looks like people are saying, I've got time, I might try something new. Now, I asked all of you yesterday, who's picking up a new hobby? Who's doing something new with all the time you're spending at home? And not one of you admitted to picking up a new sex toy. You bunch of liars. Nothing to be ashamed about. Hold your flashlights high, wave them proud. This article seemed to say that it was mostly single people buying the toys. I suppose they can't go out and pick up at the bar. Couples, on the other hand, have much more time to do some wrestling together. But I hope you have stocked up on condoms now because it looks like we're headed to a worldwide condom shortage now. Gator Pan says, can't admit if it hasn't arrived yet. All right, it's in a transit. They have printed the shipping label. It should be shipping soon. Hopefully you get that soon, Gator Pants. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Oakenhops. It's probably about some old MMO. Broly says, we're all prudes. But my wife doesn't like it when I wave her around. <laughs> oh my. They're arranging the crane and the flatbed. I'm excited. Damn, you got, you got the extra large version of something. Not sure what. You can go, you can go spelunking in that big ass flashlight. All right, so I just mentioned all you couples out there, there could be a condom shortage happening. The world's largest manufacturer of condoms was forced to shut down in March for over a week. And while they ended up receiving an exemption to reopen, they were only allowed to return 50% of its workforce. During the time they were shut down, it resulted in the loss of 100 million condoms that were to be produced. The company produced over 20% of the world's entire supply. Other producers in China were also closed for a time and they think shortages could last for months. 
They say that it's most likely to affect like humanitarian programs like in Africa where they're giving out condoms, but it also could hit first world countries as well. So pace yourself, people. Take count of how many you have. Be sure to uh, pick up an extra box just in case. You never know when you're going to need them. You don't want to go, you don't want to run out. We don't know how long we're going to have to be quarantined. So if you're running low, best to keep an eye out now looking for some rubbers. So there's a couple stories about how the pandemic is affecting us common people. But what about the people that actually work in the sex industry? I think on our first or second show, we talked about Boober a food delivery service from a strip club so they could keep dancers, the bar and kitchen staff employed. Nomad says, awesome. So COVID-19 is going to help other diseases. Yes, uh, that is what it is looking like. Uh, it also looks like uh, they were potentially running out of being able to produce birth control as well. So I think while people are being safer at home and not wanting to start a family in this condition, uh, who knows, maybe in nine months we end up with a corona baby boom. Wonder what the decline in IUDs has been? Yes, I would imagine with people not going out to bars, not picking up, there probably is a decrease in STDs as well. So that's a good thing. Um, Gator Pan says we're going to have a baby boot come up because of all of this. I think it's definitely possible. I think people are trying to be smart. Uh, but if we do end up with shortages, then who knows? So Allure had an interesting article written by an Aaron Taylor titled What It's Like to Be a Phone Sex Worker in the Time of COVID-19. Erin describes herself as a professional dom or dominatrix, but she had established herself a little bit as a phone sex operator before the pandemic hit. Since COVID-19, she has had to transition completely to phone sex because, as she put it, I can't beat my pain sluts or kick a man in the balls while socially distancing, which is both psychologically and financially stressing me out. So I've made the switch for the foreseeable future to virtual ways of making a living. Kanye says there is every time people get stuck indoors, blackouts, blizzards, etc. Yeah, and this is for an extended period of time. So definitely could be another boom coming. Okanop says she's got those pay pigs shelling out big dollars. Looks like it. But it was very interesting. The interesting part of this is the type of people that she says are calling right now. The people that she's getting to call right now. She, and this is a quote. People who may not have bought phone sex before are buying it now because they're alone in their apartments. While those who typically do call may not be anymore because they're in quarantine with their partners or spouses. Every call used to be guided by a kink. But now it's just lonely people in quarantine seeking some sense of normalcy. So I thought that was really interesting. That previously it could have been people who have a partner and they just maybe weren't comfortable getting uh, their partner to do the kinky stuff with them. So they would call a phone sex operator and that's how they would get their kink off. And now it's people that might have gone out to the bar for their social interaction and hooking up. Now that they can't do that, they're calling the phone sex operator just so they can get a sense of normalcy. And I thought that was really interesting. And this actually is a really good article. I, I will post the link in the show notes. Uh, I always post the outline with the YouTube video that I put up. Okenhop says, didn't even know phone sex was still a thing with webcams now uh, having taken over. It is still a thing. I personally do know someone who does this. Um, so yeah, it's a good article. It goes into how this is stressing the workers financially. And some have had to pick up work from aggressive clients that they had previously stopped working with. So it is getting dangerous for them to try to make ends meet doing this. 
um, how it's not as easy as you might think to get set up to work online and how protecting your privacy is really hard when you're doing work like this. And as far as how you can help if you are interested, she says, quote, one of the best ways non-sex workers can help right now is by giving money directly to the sex workers you know or admire. Uh, buying your porn directly through the performers rather than watching on tube sites and simply put paying for sex virtually for the time being. If you have a work from home job and can regularly donate to sex, sex worker mutual aids, you should also do that. Because apparently there are stuff, there are like uh, crowdfunding sites to help this industry as well. Because as I found out from reading some stories of people applying for unemployment um strippers were not able to file for unemployment which i thought was kind of weird because i know they're they're paying basically rent to be able to get up on stage and do their thing and make money and if all of the strip clubs are closed i feel like they should be able to file for unemployment as well nomad says not everyone is equipped for a visual media that is true as well you don't have to be insanely hot to be a phone sex operator. And I would imagine I would imagine that it's probably more personal as well because I believe the cams that's always done like uh for everyone that's watching. It's not like a one-on-one -on -one thing. I don't know, maybe there's a one-on-one -on -one thing. I would imagine that probably costs more than a dollar 99 a minute though. K.K. McCloud says, Sweet Emotion Aerosmith video. I'll have to look that up to see what you mean. So, again, it really is a well-written, good article, especially if you're not familiar with the sex work industry. I really recommend reading it to inform yourself because the sex work industry is more than just, like, escorts or prostitutes or something like that. Um, it's, a, it's a good read. So let's get to a facepalm story for sex. Sex is kind of the theme today, if you haven't noticed. Uh, this is a uh, do-as-I-say-and-not-as-I-do story. This one involves a footballer, but a UK-style football, soccer if you will. Manchester City soccer star Kyle Walker seems like he knows what to do from this Instagram post urging people to stay home. This is what he had to say. Hope everyone is well. Don't forget to stay at home. Protect the NHS and save lives. So hopefully that came through. My headphones went off because I hadn't played any sounds in a bit. But he was saying, stay home, help the NHS, the National Health Service, uh, you know, smash that curve down. But like I said, do as I say, not as I do. While he stayed at home and... He wanted others to stay at home as well, but he stayed at home and he prevented others from doing the same because he hosted a couple of paid sex workers to accompany him and his friend for a sex party at his house. So obviously, this goes against the social distancing guidelines that the UK has implemented. Walker paid the women £2,200 for a three-hour session for him and his friend. Yes, KK, he was hosting a COVID sex party. So this ended up costing him much more than the £22 because it got out. One of the girls did take a picture of him counting out the money, went viral. And now it's cost him much more than the 2200 He got a £225,000 fine from his team that ended up being donated to the NHS. And Walker might find himself out of, out of a job as the manager of the team, Gareth Southgate, was seething and vowed Walker would never play for him again. And I guess Walker has gotten the message now. He's sticking to online and supporting sex workers that way. Because on his official Instagram that has over 1.7 million followers, he was seen leaving emojis in chat on a stream of a London-based stripper doing a five-hour broadcast 
So I have no problem with him doing this. It's online. No one is in danger. But for him personally, if you just got busted with a couple of call girls that cost you a quarter mil and possibly your job, maybe you want to make another account to do this on. Not your verified Instagram account. Make a burner account so nobody knows that it is you. Oakenhop says, really fun way to develop herd immunity. God save the queen. Cater pants, 2200 for three hours? Jesus, I need to renegotiate my rates. Are you talking about what you're charging people or what you are paying people? Are you saying 2200 is cheap for three hours? And you, you need to pay less for what you're getting? Or that you should be charging more? AK says, back, show and tell, party stream over. Nice. Oakenhop says, UK should seize all of his assets over 10 years of the median UK income. Why does he have that much money? I believe they said he was a, his contract uh, overall was like 50 mil. So he's not hurting for money. I don't think that quarter mil uh, fine really hurt him that much. Uh, so maybe he's gotten the message. Maybe he hasn't. He was still reported outside and not really social distancing so himself from his neighbors, but there have been no more reports of any call girls making their way to his house. So that's how COVID-19 has kind of been affecting sex nowadays. And that is the main theme I had for this show. But I kind of burned through that, didn't I? I do have a couple other stories. Uh, Disney Plus. That's right. We're moving straight from sex, sex workers, to Disney Plus. So maybe for those of you that aren't spending your time bumping uglies or using your flashlight, you're watching Disney Plus. And in this headline reads, Disney shares jump as Disney Plus subscriptions pass 50 million. But there is, they do not say if these are all paid subscriptions. It could be people that have just signed up for the, the free two weeks or something, or maybe the whole free month. They also say that 20% of those subscribers came through a distribution partnership with Verizon. So if you uh, were a Verizon customer, you also got Disney Plus for free for a year. But regardless of that, the Disney stock popped as much as 7% after this report came out on how many subscribers they had. So it looks like Disney Plus is doing pretty well. I will say that my wife really loves Disney movies, so she has been watching all of the old movies. Personally, I don't get any enjoyment from watching all those old movies. Uh, Broly says moving furniture is another, uh, another phrase for bumping uglies, having sex. Um, people be smashing that Mickey subscribe button. Yeah, and I don't get it. I, I watched a little bit of The Simpsons that was on there. Uh, that's probably the only show other than Mandalorian that I have watched on there. Uh, but I kind of just threw that on when I was eating lunch really quickly and just needed something on. It's not something I would normally watch. So besides Mandalorian, I have absolutely no reason to watch Disney+. Plus. But my wife seems to really enjoy watching all of the old Disney movies and some recent ones too. She was watching Moana last night. No, Matt says watch all of Rebels and Clone Wars. So yeah, has all the Star Wars stuff on there, even the animated uh, shows. And But I watched those when they were on, so I have seen those. Onward is on there. It's good. I recommend it. I did watch Onward as well. Uh, I thought it was okay. It was cute. Wasn't my favorite Disney movie by any means, but it was definitely worth watching. And it was cool that I believe that was a movie that was set to be released in the theaters. So it was cool that they decided to release it on the Disney Plus platform instead. Give people a little something to watch at home um, 
while we're stuck. So good on Disney for doing that. Um, I have to look up. I know when Disney originally sent people home and closed their parks, they were still paying them, but it was only going to be for like a two, three week period or something. I need to look up if Disney has kept on paying their employees through this extended shutdown. Because I gave Disney props for that initially when they said they were going to keep on paying people. I need to make sure they're still doing that. Because like I said before, we should all be making a list of companies that are doing bad and companies that are doing good. And that's how we're going to decide how we're gonna, who we're going to support when all of this blows over. Wally Oakenhop says, while E is quality Disney film that correctly analyzes contemporary American culture. McLeod says, if they're not still paying, Disney will silence all reports. That definitely seems to be happening with some companies. Even healthcare providers nowadays are firing people for speaking out about conditions. I've heard stories about uh, doctors and nurses being fired because they did crowdfunding campaigns to buy protective gear, which sounds absolutely insane first of all that doctors and nurses even have to go the route of crowdfunding to get enough money to pay for a protective gear for them to wear while they're trying to help americans stay alive okay this is what happens when labor is weak and unorganized sadly 100 percent agree and that we just haven't been prepared for a pandemic like this which b because it probably would have only taken us you know a hundred million dollars or something to make sure all the hospitals are always stocked up that we have a national stockpile that is appropriate but then people don't want to waste a hundred million dollars for something that might not happen but now it's going to end us costing trillions and trillions the first stimulus was already for what 2.3 trillion there's going to be another one there absolutely has to be cloud says obama was trying to prep us yeah there were some things that were canceled after obama was gone and that would be a whole nother episode i could do just on that most likely i'm not going to talk too much about that at the moment but there's all there's always a little something you can do my wife recently, uh, we had two N, uh, what is it, 95? N95 masks uh, at home that we had used when we were painting cabinets and stuff like that, uh, redoing a little work on our house. And so those are the really good masks for um, healthcare industry. And she was able to find a place online where they matched you with uh, healthcare workers because now they have ways to disinfect those masks. So they matched her up with a couple of local healthcare workers. They give her a label to ship the masks to them, and then um, they can disinfect the masks and use them. So even if you only have one or two masks at home, you can find a way to get those to healthcare workers and do your part, do your part because you should be staying home as much as you can and those masks are going to make a, a much bigger difference in the hands of a healthcare worker than they are going to be if you just have to use them you know once every one to two weeks when you go out and buy some groceries and you should be able to use a regular maybe not a N N95 mask to help you when you just go to the grocery store all right. Burley says Congress is, in, is working on the fourth stimulus that would increase essential workers' income by 25000 over the course of this year. I heard that. I think that's amazing. And I hope that they include people like grocery store workers in that as well, because these are the people that aren't making that much money. And normally they should be getting a hazard pay type thing because we absolutely 100% depend on them. And we are depending on a lot of people that before all this started, there were people who said they did not deserve $15 an hour for the work they are doing. And hopefully people reevaluate that thinking 
when we vote on, no, well, I guess we don't really vote on minimum wage, but we can pressure politicians to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Um, ba -ba -bum. Oak and hops, or just use ClickList or similar curbside grocery pickup service worth the extra $5, almost zero risk for groceries. Yes, I have never heard of ClickList. Uh, I have done Amazon delivery before, but I'm a little torn on supporting Amazon, which, yes, I get the irony that I'm broadcasting on Twitch, which is owned by Amazon. But I can't be 100% perfect, but I try to do my best. Um, Grocery store workers are specifically mentioned. Okay, that's good. I think grocery workers should be there. Uh fast food should be on there as well I would think and of course you have everyone in the healthcare industry that should be on there as well Oganop says hell yes hazard pay universal healthcare living wages that's what she, we should be fighting for unfortunately our man Bernie who was fighting for all that has dropped out but we just gotta keep on pushing we gotta push Biden to adopt some of those things Gatorbrand says DoorDash ended up delivering our groceries since the local stores are maxed out on deliveries. It was an absolute shit show. Yeah, I have um, I have heard that some of the delivery services are having problems because a lot of drivers that were doing jobs like that have had to stay home. They like they, they they've either gotten sick or they want don't want to risk getting sick by driving people around or driving you know your groceries to you because you never know. Uh, what could be on the groceries that you're picking up because let's be honest these people have not uh, they don't have a very good wage they are basically they feel like they absolutely have to go to work like before this everyone would go to work sick because they can't afford to lose out on that pay and people are definitely still doing that and that's how it keeps on spreading just like the Amazon warehouses, you feel like you absolutely have to go to work to make that money. And that, that's just the way it is. So I understand if people don't want to do the, the Uber Eats, the DoorDash, that type of stuff right now. And Cater Pants, that or they're just used to grabbing single large bag from McDonald's. Now they're getting a trunk full of groceries that don't necessarily know how to care for. That too. It's a lot different than just picking up from a restaurant. Now you have, you know, five packages because I've ordered from Amazon and like the, the tracking uh, barcodes on there. Like, I don't understand it. Just like, no, I don't, I don't see any correlation between all the, all the bags. I'm like, all right, hopefully they're all right. Hmm. So I had a couple other ones today. But I think I'm going to save them for next time. Because I think they're going to take up more time than I have for this one. So I think we're going to we're gonna wrap it up unless anyone has any other stories they would like to talk about. If anyone wants to call in to talk about, talk about some sex, any of the sex stories that we had today, kind of burned through them. Thought that was going to take me more time. But the other ones I have are probably too much time. Really says, make sure you're washing your groceries when you get home and change your clothes if you can afford to. Uh, we have been doing that. We Any groceries we get, we'll lay out on a towel and then we'll wipe everything down, wash everything, move it to another towel so we know what we have washed and what we haven't washed. And then we wash the towel that we had put everything out on. And it's just safer, you know. It... Because coronavirus can live on that stuff. You never know. It's better to be safe than sorry. And we've got a lot of time now at home. So I'm pretty sure you can afford the time to just wipe everything down. And it can live on your clothes as well. Good thing is, like, the virus does stick to your clothes. So unless you're, like, rubbing your hands on your clothes and then rubbing your face, you're probably fine if you just wash your clothes. Um... It's not going to, like, the virus isn't going to, like, leach off of the clothes. It sticks to clothes pretty well. You just want to wash them. So, until next time, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate all the chat today. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully, I had some fun stories for you and you enjoyed that. 
And uh, I will not be streaming any Final Fantasy tonight, but Chili will over at twitch.tv slash radio. So thank you so much for coming out, participating, giving us all that social interaction that we've been missing out on, being stuck at home. I'm aiming to do this every weekday for the foreseeable future. Um, So come join me every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, We're going to have some fun stuff to talk about and hopefully share some laughs together. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye.